All right, thanks for staying with us on News Hub. So this is uh, Stretch Home Now. Let's take a, keep a tab on our neighbors, our brothers and sisters in Ghana as they decide who occupies the Flagstaff House uh, in Accra from now to the next four years. The update on the presidential and general election, I beg your pardon, uh, they held in the country yesterday. Joining us live from Ghana, our journalist, just uh, Raymond Yamdo, uh, as well as Kizito Kujo. Raymond, thank you very much for joining us on News Hub today. Uh, so how far is the journey uh, since yesterday? How far is Ghana gone? Uh, with the journey to the new dispensation. Justin, I beg your pardon, Justin, and Kizit, okay, Justin, so you're welcome onto the program. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, yes, okay, so far, results have been trickling in, um, in their bits, in very small bits. Uh, we can say that for the presidential, we have up to about 33% of the constituency results coming in, um, putting the president, Nanado Damkwa Kufuadu, ahead by about 51 or 52%, uh, with the um, challenger, former president, um, John Dramani Mahama, coming with about some 50, uh, 47%. Um, where the interesting thing is, is the parliamentary results where you have um, each of the parties eating into certain traditional strongholds of their opponent. Um, here in Accra, you see um, the NDC grabbing one strong, um, one stronghold of the MPP the constituency is called Okaipwe North, which from 1996 has been an MPP seat. Um, but you also go to the north, a place like Damungo, in the region that John Mahama comes from, um, NPP snatches the Damungo seat from the NDC. Then you also go to, in Ghana, we have three swing regions, three swing regions, that is the capital, the capital region, that is Greater Accra, and you have the central region, and then you have the western region. Now, these regions, some of the, most of the times, is carried by the winner, and you begin to see um, NDC doing better in those regions than they did in the previous election, actually also winning some traditional seats of the MPP um, in those regions. However, you also go to voter region where you see the MPP going to take Hohoi, which is an NDC stronghold, because Hohoi is in is the northernmost part of Volta region and Volta region is the stronghold of the NDC. Now, MPP goes to grab the Hohoi seat for the parliamentary, although Mahama won the presidential in that particular constituency. Now, over the night, we have not slept here. We have not been sleeping. Um, both parties held press conferences where each of them wanted Ghanaians to believe that they were doing good. They were doing, they were actually cruising to victory. So the NDC actually held the press conference first around just past midnight and said they had actually snatched 36 seats from the MPP. Now, one of those seats has actually fallen back to the MPP, one of the seats they said they had snatched has actually fallen back to the MPP. However, most of the seats they indicated they had snatched, as things stand now, look like have actually been snatched by the NDC. But those that the MPP also said they had snatched from the NDC, I think it's looking true that MPP has snatched them. 
So like I said, you have about 33 to 34% of the presidential ballots coming in so far with the incumbent president um, leading by about 51 point something percent. And then his challenger, his main challenger, John Domani Mahama, coming close with 47 point something percent. So this is the situation we have in the country now. Then after these press conferences, the Electoral Commission came out and warned the two parties not to go to town with any unconfirmed figure. So all the figures they are actually throwing about are provisional figures that have not yet been certified by the Electoral Commission. But of course, each of them has a strong room where they have their agents from the collation centers and from their polling stations filing in the figures as they stood at the time of counting the ballots, at the time of certifying the pink sheets at the polling stations. Uh -huh. So these are the figures the parties are working with at the moment. Justice Adobo, thank you. Let, let's, get, let's talk with Kizito. Kizito is also a journalist in Ghana and um, has been covering elections. I, I'm, I'm sure like Justice too, you probably haven't gotten any sleep in the last um, 12, 12, 12 uh, 16 hours. Uh, glad that this happens once in four years, so you should be used uh, to this. Yes. It's, your, it's your, your special Olympics for journalists in Ghana, I can, I can imagine. <laughs> but um, while, while I've been getting, trying to get used to Ghanaian uh, names, uh, uh, polling stations, I did see the Commonwealth team at uh, Ododo Diodo, and I was laughing, and I said, if we had that sort of uh, <laughs> If we had that sort of name in, in Nigeria, we probably would have been making fun of those who were staying in Ododo Diodo. But, but tell me something. Yes. Um, yes. We're not 24 hours yet after the close of polls that um, the Electoral Commission did say that results be out. And a uh, previous election that I've covered in, in, in Ghana, I'm trying to see whether there's been any difference in the way the rollout has happened of the results. I'm not too sure there's been any significant change in the speed of the results coming out. What is the Electoral Commission saying? Are they sticking to uh, the 24-hour timeline for the final results to be re released and an announcement made? Y yes. Um, first of all, I think that I have to acknowledge that, um, you know, uh, this is one of the uh, most peaceful elections that um, we've had in, in Ghana. Um, in fact, uh, this is the, I think the, if you look at ever since we began from the fourth republic the elections we've had if you look at the things that has happened in the past and 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 you compare it to this current election um, you would of course grade this election as the most peaceful but that is not to say that um certain things are not also happening yes other things are happening and, and it is as a result of um, some happenings that occurred in 2012, in the 2012 elections. Yeah. If you remember the famous uh, elections that uh, led the president to um, go to the Supreme Court to protest the outcome of the election, a number of the things that occurred was that elections are won at the polling station and, 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 and not necessarily in court. So moving on from there, the NPP, which is now the ruling uh, party and which forms the government, decided length their elections le lessons and decided to you know come up with a lot of measures to um, um, go into future elections and so if you look at 2016 election the MPP developed a very strong um, what we call the code room the code room is actually a coalition a, a coalition center developed by um, uh, the NPP party where they were drawing figures from across the country and putting them together so in in 2016, they were able to project themselves. They were able to call the, the, the elections way before the, the EC came out to announce the certified results, which of course confirmed the, the results the MPP earlier on mentioned. And so that has been the trend. And this is what is happening right now, where the N NDC as an opposition party is also learning and also deploying such measures. That is why my colleague mentioned earlier that now the, both the NPP and the NDC are throwing about figures and the figures are coming from 
you know, the 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 constituents, the various constituencies across the country. I am in Ashanti region, and if you look at what the EC has been saying, it's similar to what my 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 colleague Justice mentioned. The EC is prevailing on the on the on the on the two main political parties to exercise constraint and then allow them to do their job. Um, however, uh, the EC has not mentioned anything about the the 48 or 24 hour rule that they themselves set. But certainly, um, some of the things that occurred within the constituencies uh, might have delayed um, the process, and that is why we are where we are at the moment. Uh, if you look at some of the outcomes, um, some of the constituencies or the polling stations didn't receive their voting materials on time. Um, uh, in fact, polling um, 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 stopped around 5 p.m. yesterday. But if you look at some areas in the northern region, as at 10 p.m. in the night, they were still um, um, voting. And then, you know, after voting, then they need to put begin to do the count and then send the data to the EC officials in the in the in the various you know uh, 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 centers before they also push it to the uh, the national center. So some of these developments affected the speed with which the EC could uh, come out and announce the result. Um, the MPP, the, as being the ruling party, has has projected themselves to be winning. They're calling um, 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 their percentage around 53 percent out of about um, uh, 90 percent of the of the constituency votes that has come in. Similarly, the NDC is also projecting themselves to be winning, quoting about 53.5% uh, mm. as, you know, the percentage won so far. Also, based on their projections from about 90% um, uh, of data from the constituencies that has come in. It is very difficult to disprove any of these things that any of them uh, is saying, but it is important that they remain calm and allow the EC to come out to, to come out. give the actual and then the true results. So All right, far, so good. That was where I, I was mean, actually taking in the because region. in Nigeria, it's outlawed that you go ahead to uh, project, as you can see in the US or other parts of the world. Let's go back to Kizito. Um, I did monitor to a large extent the uh, happenings in, uh, during the election, uh, you know, yesterday. That's on Monday. I'll talk more about this. The question will be on the electoral process. Uh, when we come back after this break, do stay with us. You can now stream Silverbird News 24 live on mobile app. All you need to do is to download Silverbird News 24 app from Google Play Store on your Android devices and App Store or on your Apple devices. Tap the live button at the bottom bar to watch us live 24-7. You can enjoy all our news programs including PJ News and Program. Silverbird News 24. The news never stops. For more news stories, kindly visit our website www.silverbirdnews24.com. You can also watch trending news videos on our YouTube channel. We are just a click away on WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Get the news in your prime on your mobile phone by downloading Silverbird News 24 from your Play or App Store. File in your witness report on our website or send an email to silverbirdn24 at gmail.com. still have focus on the Ghana general elections 2020 and with us we still have uh join us via zoom a journalist from Ghana there's justice Adobo as well as Kizito Kujo uh, before the break I was going to put the question across to justice I beg your pardon and to take a look at the electoral uh, process that 
uh, has been deployed in this general election. For instance, I did watch Joy Television yesterday where I saw the fact that inmates voted. We heard that before now, uh, Ghanaians in diaspora had voted and that being people who had voted even earlier before now, some people who, who uh, provide um, essential services had voted before uh, Monday uh, election. So what impact do you think this would have in the outcome of the election as the Electoral Commission would pronounce, hopefully later on today. Can you please unmute your device, Justice, so that we can hear you? So the early voting is a system that has been put in place since I think year 2000, where security personnel, as well as other officials, including the media, who would be assigned to constituencies other than where they vote on election day, are made to vote a week earlier than the election day. Now, in fact, what happens is once these votes are cast, the ballot boxes are locked and then kept at the police station until election day. So on election day, whichever constituency a particular special voting center is, the ballots there are counted in addition to the constituency's ballots and declared. So you would hear rumors from people, especially supporters of some of the political parties that, oh, we have won among the security services, or we have won the special votes, mm -hmm. and so on. But when we checked this last week after the vote, we realized that these are just speculation because the votes are not counted and declared before the election day. But what it does is that it ensures that you who are going on a national duty and an electoral duty do not get disenfranchised because you are performing this duty. And so it helps in the voter turnout numbers because, for instance, this year we had over 100 and I think over 101,000 special voters list. And last week before this, uh, before yesterday's election, the EC told us that there had been about 85% um, voting by those whose names appeared on the special voters list, which is a very high turnout. And so that could actually impact on the voter turnout for the year. Because if you had about 100,000 out of 17 million not voting, that could have deducted from the voter turnout. But while this particular measure is put in place to ensure that those performing special election duties on election day are not disenfranchised, it actually adds to the voter turnout numbers. Let, let me, let's speak with Kizito now. Um, just to re-echo what um, Justice was talking about um, in terms of the numbers, which is often a, a good indicator to see uh, voter, voter turnout and whether voter apathy did happen with the election. Help us understand from the results that have been released so far if um, there's any indication that we've had um, high voter turnout on the average across the different um, regions. Okay, so um, if you look at the results that are coming in as at the moment, um, it is very difficult to tell whether there's been low voter turnout or high voter turnout. But certainly, um, prior to um, the uh, declaration of the results from most of the constituencies, uh, you know, the two main opposition parties developed the tactics where they began to speculate that um, the voter turnout at the, at the other, you know, at the others, um, um, you know, uh, uh, stronghold is, 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 is down or is low. And then there are also we start to saying that yes, I mean similarly, this is something that is also happening in the, you know, Volta region or the Ashanti region. So you kept 
having people calling to find out because I mean you could be based in any of the regions. Somebody calling to find out is it true that I mean you know there is water apathy, there is I mean you know high water turnout. They, people wanted to know, but in all these, one of the things that we can we can say if you look at the 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 provisional results that are coming, if you look at the the number of persons, the voter population, and 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 the votes that were registered. It, it doesn't give you any indication that there were low voter turnout. In fact, it's 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 encouraging if you if you look at and then it also starts from the uh, uh, a special uh, voting that happened because that's where the indication starts from. The moment the the special voting had high voter turnout, definitely it trickles down to you know the the main election as well, where you also see quite a number of people following suit and then voting. So. Uh, for me, I think that until the EC comes out to give us a, a clear picture as to the, you know, the, 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 the certified result as to what is coming from here, what is going from there, it is very difficult to 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 um, uh, dispute some of these things that are ongoing. But you know, from our mere observation, also we could say it's it's encouraging. It's 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 not bad. It's encouraging, and and that's what we can pride ourselves that. Um, you know, Ghanaians are becoming more and more enlightened about the electoral processes. Let's let's talk about women. Why why shouldn't we? All right, all over the world is just is believed that Africa was still lagging behind in uh, giving women a chance to rule, as we say here. In this present election, we have three women vying to be president of Ghana. For instance, the former first lady and widow of uh, late Jerry Rowling, there's uh, Nana Kunad. Uh, uh, Kunadu Rawlings, who's leading the National Democratic Party, NDP, uh, Akwa Donko of the Ghana Freedom Party, GFP, and Bridget Akosua uh, of the Progressive People's Party, PPP. What would you say has been the uh, uh, attitude of, of uh, let's say, electorates towards uh, a possible female president emerging in Ghana? Is this something the Ghanaians are thinking about? Okay. Um... Was that to me? Yes. Right. So, right. Like you pointed out, um, and you know that in the global population, women actually have a higher population turnout. Then here in Ghana, women are more than 51% of our population. Then on the voters register also, women, females are more than 51% of the total voter of the registered voters in Ghana. Because of that, certain interest groups, especially gender advocates, believe that Ghanaian women are getting to the point where they should become the kingmakers in Ghana's politics having a keen interest and influence on who becomes the leader of the country and who goes to parliament to represent the people. Now, this is an idea that has been promoted at least for more than a decade. And we've had the affirmative action that the gender advocacy groups have been working on, which have called for equal representation of females in government, in parliament, at the local assembly level, etc. Now, what we have not had actually is women, a, a, a lot more women aspiring to reach the top echelon of political decision making in Ghana. I will also not discount the issue of, you know, cultural apathy, because I saw when in, I think, 1992, one of the presidential candidates called um, George Daku, eh? Kabra Daku, picked a female running mate, one English professor from the University of Cape Coast, they did not fly. Their ticket did not fly at all. And of course, 
you know, Jerry Rollins was standing in that election with his huge charisma, larger than life persona. And so you wouldn't expect any other candidate to actually pull any more votes. But then over the years, some presidential candidates have tried it. Brid Bridget Jogbenuku, whom you mentioned for the PPP, was actually a beauty queen in Ghana, was a Miss Ghana around 1989 or 1990 when she was in KNUST and has worked in the public sector for over a long period. And this is a woman who has built herself up in terms of managerial skills, who we can believe that with her experience can actually run a country. However, what happens is that if you do not find yourself in the right political setting, then these aspirations would be defeated. Because you said yesterday that Ghana seems to be going the American way of a two-party system, although we said it's a multi-party system. Yes, Ghana is beginning to go the way of a two-party system, because anytime the smaller parties try to catch up, the elections expose their strength, that they are not there at all. So if any woman aspires to lead this country, then that woman should be pitching camp, will be compelled actually to pitch camp with two of the traditional parties, the MPP and the NDC. Now in, in 2011, Mrs. Wallace actually attempted to upstage the then president, Jonathan Mills, to become the party's presidential candidate in the 2012 election. When she went, later, maybe when you do the postmortem, you may say that the timing was not right for her. When she went, she got just around 3% of the votes at the presidential primaries. Now, so you begin to realize that there are several dynamics that must be employed if we actually want the issue of affirmative action to meet the goals, the ends that we desire. For instance, we saw in America when Hillary Clinton stood in the 2012, no, 2008 primaries, but lost to Obama. Now, then she worked herself up and then became the Secretary of State. Later, when she stood on the party ticket, she was accepted by the party. Unfortunately, the American society didn't accept her. And okay. so she could not break the glass ceiling, that the proverbial glass ceiling that we expected her to break. Right. But then this year, you see Kamala Harris actually being picked by Joe Biden as his running mate. And now America has an elected vice president, um, you know, a, 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 yeah, a vice president elect. Mm -hmm. so, these are the, some of the dynamics that we okay. need to employ for those of us who think that, yes, women being the larger part of the population of the world also must be there at the top where decision is made. We need to employ right. some of these strategies mm -hmm. to ensure that the women's voice get, actually get to the table of decision All making. Right. Thank you, Justice Adobo. I wanted to ask that question, so I'm happy you answered it today. And we wish Ghana the best as we expect the election results today. Thank you so much, Justin. You're welcome. All right. So, uh, we have Kizito to go. Uh, Kizito, your final thoughts as we bring the discussion to a close on News Hub. Yeah, so uh, I would say that as, as African first and as a Ghanaian second, um, it's it's what we are doing here in Ghana um, is very, very important, and we need to all take pride in um, what's been happening. Uh, we need to um, ensure also that, I mean, going forward, our other African uh, countries that will be going into elections will take you from what Ghana has done and then, and then try as much as possible to have a free and fair election, and elections that would bring peace, would ensure peace ac across um, the African continent. Very much, uh, Kizito Kujo.
a pleasure speaking with you. It's a journalist in Ghana. And I think it's a more um, relevant debate and discussion we have who has the better election rather than Jollof Rice. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All the yeah, better yeah, national teams. True. Black stars are the super that's eagles, true. eh? And maybe football <laughs> as well. All right. Okay, so um, mm. now that the Charlies are yes. out of here, we can tell them some other things they wouldn't want to hear. Like, <laughs> like, they are younger you know. brothers. But, eh? but, but I've <laughs> noticed the fact that um, um, people on essential duties could vote during uh, <laughs> the heard him, of course, <laughs> could vote during this uh, general election in Ghana. Yeah. For many journalists, I can tell you, many of us have not voted in years, maybe 12 years, maybe more than that, because our statutory really will be at work, will be the ones to analyze, will be the one uh, at different points, you know, pulling you know, our units, trying to collate uh, results, trying to get information out to the people out there. Mm -hmm. And also prison inmates, I guess some prison inmates voted in Nigeria in the last election. Yes. Uh, but yes. for journalists, for Nigerians in diaspora, an electoral uh, reform is going on. Let's see yes. how yes. Uh, we can borrow leaves here yes. from here and uh, yes. make uh, African mm -hmm. democracy mm -hmm. deepen yeah. Uh, African democracy, so right. to speak. So right. I want to thank uh, Justice and uh, right. uh, uh, that's uh, Kujo yeah, uh, for being part of yeah. the program today. Hopefully we get the results from you in earnest. We're waiting for right. that. And to all of our guests, we want to thank you that Captain Omar that was here as well as uh, uh, Kenneth that spoke with us from Port Harcourt and everyone, Wale Fadari also, everyone for being part of News Up today. The program returns tomorrow with the gentlemen in the building. Don't miss it. I am sure we did you. And I'm over Obo. Sayonara. <laughs>